Hi y'all, I'm going to take a moment right at the beginning of this video just to go way back to basics. I think it'll be worth our time. We need to review some exponent rules uh, and some related things. And I find that even up through calculus and beyond, exponent rules are things that a lot of students still get mixed up about and make mistakes with. So I just wanna go back to that foundational understanding and we'll work our way up into just the little tricky pieces of review fairly quickly. So I actually want to start with multiplication and just remind you that multiplication is just a shorthand for repeated addition. So if I write n times x, I mean we're adding up x's and to be specific, we're adding up n of them. So I take n x's and I add them together. For example, if you had um, four times seven, you could think about that as seven plus seven plus seven plus seven, four sevens added together. And multiplication can happen in either order. So you could also write that as seven fours added together. Okay, so multiplication is a shorthand for addition. Exponents are a shorthand for multiplication. So they represent repeated multiplication. And again here, this means we're going to take n x's, so there will be n of them, and we're going to multiply them this time, not add them. So if we want 7 to the 4th, that would be 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. Note that order does absolutely matter here. 4 to the 7th wouldn't be anywhere close to 7 to the 4th. Um, but multiplication is really flexible that way. All right, so we should be able to jump in. And again, the first few of these are not very exciting, but they give me a chance to remind you of a few things. And then we'll get some of the negatives in the mix, which is one of the places that a lot of people get hung up. Okay, so nine squared, when you see that, you should just be thinking nine times nine, which is 81. If you're really rough with your times tables, it's probably worth it to review that. If you want me to help you find somewhere, just like flashcards or something to study that, I will happily do it. I would also say that if you haven't, it's worth memorizing some of these perfect squares and cubes. For the perfect squares, I would say we wanna go up to 12 squared. That might sound like a lot, but all of them up to 12 squared come up pretty regularly. And then I would say for the perfect cubes, Five cubed is probably good enough. So if you know two cubed, three cubed, four cubed, five cubed, you'll be in pretty good shape. Uh, after that, I don't know that I necessarily memorize them. I can just figure them out fairly painlessly if the numbers are small enough. So like with fourth powers, I would say up to three to the fourth. And again, it's not that I have three to the fourth memorized. It's just that I can figure that one out. So notice I'm not going very high with the base there. Uh, the numbers get kind of big and challenging really quickly, but this is what I'd expect you to be comfortable with without a calculator. And then for fifth powers, it's probably for us just going to be twos and tens. I expect you to be able to do two to higher powers. You're just doubling over and over again or 10 to higher powers. So kind of keep that in mind. I already linked a practice that just has tons and tons of this. So I recommend above doing your homework, going in and doing that. If you don't feel comfortable, just throwing these out there fairly quickly. So five cubed is five times five times five, which you can break down. You can say five times five is 25. And then you'd have to multiply that by a five again, which should get you 125. So again, you have to do maybe some memorization there if that's feeling really hard to you. I wrote myself a little note just so I'd remember to say, we've been reviewing geometry as we go as well. So I wanna point out that that really is why it's called nine squared. The second power is squaring because that's the same idea as finding a square, the area of a square with side lengths nine and five cubed is like finding the volume of a cube where all the side lengths are five. So there is a tie to the geometry in there. Three to the fourth, that would be three times three times three times three. And I would say maybe do those in chunks. Three times three is nine and then I would need to multiply those together and I'm actually back to 81 again. So really I'm just trying to show you here what I kind of expect you to work towards being able to do. And then two to the fifth, like I said, I just do that as doubling. So it means multiply five of them. So I would say two times two is four 
And then if we loop in another two, we're up to eight. And then we double that and we're up to 16. And we double that and we're up to 32. And I would expect you to be able to go higher than that even with twos. We should definitely be able to do probably 64 and then 128 and probably beyond that. But two is the only one that I'll go to those higher powers with without letting you have a little bit of calculator use or something so it doesn't get too tedious. Okay, now I wanna get into the negative signs because this really is a big thing that I see a lot of trouble with. So I'm gonna start just with 11 squared is 11 times 11, which is 121. Now I want to distinguish between, I'm gonna switch colors, negative 11 squared and the quantity negative 11 squared. The first one, this is gonna maybe sound weird, but it really helps as we work through algebra to always think of negative signs as attached by a, a multiplication. So I think about that as negative one times 11 squared. And then my order of operations says that the exponent, so this is my PEMDAS, the exponent should happen before the multiplication should happen. So this is why we have to be really careful that power doesn't apply to the negative without the parentheses, which we'll see next. So this really does mean negative one times 11 squared, which means 11 times 11, which will be negative 121. To distinguish between them, the quantity negative 11 squared, this means you first have to hook the negative sign to the 11 and then you have to square it. So this truly does mean negative 11 times negative 11, which will be positive 121. So be very careful with this. This is a really, really common error. Fractions, with fractions, you can, and I have exponent properties coming up, but I figured I'd say it right now, you basically get to cube the top and the bottom. So this is meaning 3 fourths times 3 fourths times 3 fourths, which means 3 times 3 times 3 on the top, 3 cubed is 27, and 4 times 4 times 4 on the bottom, 4 cubed is 64. So now with the negative signs again, the first one means negative three fourths multiplied by itself, negative three fourths, and then another one, three of them total. Whereas the second one means negative just once, three fourths times three fourths times three fourths. And I wanna say with this one, if, well, I guess if I didn't put the parentheses, it wouldn't be real clear if the four was cubed as well. But if there are no parentheses, this is what it means. It means just one negative sign. Okay, so the first one, if I multiply two negatives, I get a positive, but then I have a third negative. So it will be back to negative 27 over 64. And the last one actually also ends up being negative 27 over 64. So when you have odd powers, it's true that it's a little easier. The negative sign doesn't get eliminated, but they still don't mean the same thing. One means multiply negative 3 fourths together, and one means multiply 3 fourths together and then multiply by negative 1. Okay, so one last row here uh, with the double negative, that can really get tricky. So again, the negative eight all squared means negative eight times negative eight. And then that one out in front is just hanging out on its own. So the two uh, negative eights become a positive 64, but that negative is still there out in front. So it's negative 64. And then the 10 to the 7, we want to be able to do powers of 10, and we're going to review some scientific notation here. So 10 to the 7 should be a 1 with 7 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10 million. So 10 to the 6 is millions, 10 to the 9 is billions, and so on. So we want to be good with all sorts of powers of 10. Okay, so that's my real basic exponent review, and we'll get into other tricky stuff from here.